You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're, you're still French! Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Hey, what are you doing there? Hey. Yes. Yes. Why? Why are you taking pictures of my car? Um, I'm with the HOA, and yeah. an unlicensed car is not allowed to be parked in the driveway. It has to be in the garage, or right. it could be covered with a uh, car cover. Okay. So I just wanted and, to. And, let you know. and your name is what? Eager. And I left you some Charwell information. Correct. And um, so there's some information there. You can go online and find the documents that say that. I you know, appreciate you not creeping around my house. Uh, well, you know, I tried to come and knock on your door. So yeah. just letting you know. And then take a picture of my tag. and. I will so. not submit the tag number, but I will have to submit the um, expiration. Okay. Well, I, I thought you guys did all that stuff from the curb and weren't um, coming onto people's property. Well, it's pretty obvious that you back the car in. So. Well, actually, that's how they dropped it off when I asked them to tow it. So. Okay. Um, well. Do you have a Do you have a job? Yeah, uh, yes, I work from home. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks for letting me know. Okay. Thank you. Yes, she has a job. She's a full-time Karen. The Karenicity in this one runs deep. Now remember, she is with the HOA. And because she's with the HOA, she is obviously empowered with these certain rights. Um, maybe he is in violation of some HOA rule, but she's literally in violation of a criminal law. You cannot trespass on the property of others. You can't do that. And she's citing the HOA rule. While yes, she's in violation of the criminal statute of trespass. She's also in violation of the HOA rules, which says that you have to observe from outside of the property. So let's count the ways here. She's in violation of her own rules at the HOA. She's in violation of actual uh, an actual criminal statute. And she is going to be courteous. And she said, I'm I'm not going to put your TAC number out there, but I have to put the expiration date. Professor, you know a little something about uh, the behavior of individuals. Uh, what's at the core of these Karens, brother? You know, I think what we're seeing now is a, a kind of behavior that going back to the last segment has been going on for a long time, right? There's nothing new if you've been the victim or the target of this kind of behavior, which is um, kind of um, holier than thou virtue signaling with a profound racial overtone that basically reinforces the kind of ideologies of a dominant group against minoritized groups. We see this a lot and it's been going on for a long time. And I think what's good about calling attention to this and, and the attention that it's gotten is number one, don't do that anymore because you're going to end up on indisputable. You're going to end up somewhere. So number one is like this behavior is not okay anymore. But I think that in a way, this kind of this kind of calling out is, is what it takes, right? Because I think that it's it's hard. I mean, this case that was idiotic, no doubt about it. But there's a m bunch of them that don't end up. You know, getting recorded and stuff like that. And so I think again that it's really a parable to kind of say that what what's acceptable behavior and unacceptable behavior have changed, and we learn it through these kind of things. And that actually not acting this way is better for everybody in a particular way. And so in that sense, I think there's a, a bigger lesson, and we see that a lot. I mean, you know. Maybe things that Governor Cuomo thought he was doing 20 years ago are not acceptable now. Uh, maybe things that other leaders thought they were doing before. Like so, mores change, and it takes stories like this to basically say that might have been okay before, but it's not okay now. And really, hopefully, that leads more broadly to um, to um, 
you know, change behavior. But of course, you also can't help but think that if, if somebody acted like this and they weren't a white woman, what 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 response would they get if they walked mm-hmm. on and started to take a picture of your car? So of course, there's also the counter parable, which is who gets to walk on your property and and not get the cops called on them or arrested or hauled away. So all these things, again, that really make us think that we're learning something about how to re-engage in the public sphere and hopefully it leads to a better outcome. But in the meantime, you know, stop <laughs> stop doing it. <laughs> yeah. You know, public embarrassment, public shame can lead to a social transformation of behavior. We've seen it happen in tort law, what's acceptable and not acceptable to now what's normative. We've also seen it happen in social advocacy. Dr. King had a simple philosophy. His philosophy was, I have to expose what they're doing through the media in order to transform public perception, thus transforming the reality of policy. But in order to get there, you had to have an exposure of the egregious behavior. So it was a strategy connected to that. 